Welcome along here on Eye on Africa, a daily look across the continent here on France 24. Our main stories. Pressure grows on Gabon's military junta to hand back power after the overthrow of President Ali Bongo. The regional bloc ECAS and the country's opposition coalition have urged international partners to push for a rapid return to civilian rule. In Democratic Republic of Congo, at least 48 people are reported to have been killed in the eastern city of Goma in a security forces crackdown Wednesday on protesters calling for UN peacekeepers to leave the country. And in South Africa, the death toll rises to 76 after the devastating Johannesburg fire at an abandoned apartment block that housed dozens of homeless people and squatters. Search and rescue operations continue with most bodies so badly burned they cannot be identified. Thanks very much for joining us here on France 24. First up, Gabon's main opposition group has urged international powers to press the military junta to hand back power. The regional bloc ECAS has also called on partners led by the African Union and the United Nations to back a rapid return to civilian rule. President Ali Bongo was arrested on Wednesday, moments after authorities declared him the winner of Saturday's election. The coup leader, General Brice Oligi Ngema, is due to be sworn in as interim president on Monday. Meanwhile, lawyers for the president's wife, Sylvia Bongo, filed a lawsuit in Paris saying the French Gabonese national and her son had been arbitrarily detained in Gabon. This is the eighth coup d'etat in Central and West Africa in the past three years, and it's revived discussion of the inability of France to break with its colonial past. Earlier, Iron Africa producer Camille Nedelec spoke to Doma Del Tombe, the co-author of the book which translates to the empire that just won't die. He said the string of coups in former French colonies could be seen as the start of a new phase of decolonialization. And, and I think the, the Gabonese people uh, who were kept in great poverty and who were deprived of political freedom I can only rejoice at, at turning the page. And I think that uh, the, the, the same general sentiment can be found in, in many other French Af French speaking African countries uh, in the Sahel, but uh, also in countries like Senegal, Cameroon, etc. Uh, I, th I think that uh, uh, the African, African people are fed up with Fr France Africa and they want to get out of the system once and for all. Uh, uh, we may be witnessing a new uh, decolonization, a new process of decolonization. As you know, uh, France succeeded in the 1950s and 60s uh, in, in uh, uh, gutting African independence. Uh, and I believe that African people are seeking to recover areas of sovereignty. So what now? Um, how should France react to these coups? Is there any way to stem the contagion? Well, I don't know. It's, it's, it's not the role of the French to uh, determine uh, where the, the, the African country uh, should go. And I think Emmanuel Macron, who presents its, himself as a, a young leader born uh, uh, years after decolonization, hasn't broken with this uh, with this mindset on Monday, he said something quite interesting. He said uh, that France should uh, respect the balance in his uh, African policy. And not, uh, he, he said, no, uh, no, neither weakness nor paternalism. Otherwise, and that's the important bit, we are nowhere. And these last words are very revealing. France has to keep its presence in Africa, otherwise, it no longer exists on the international stage. And, and, and Macron's entire uh, African policy follows this ambition, to reform France-Afrique, not, uh, not so that it disappears, but so that it endures. And uh, in, in this, and, and that's what we show in, in our book, uh, he, he remains faithful to a long historical trajectory uh, that we summarize by saying that France Afrique is a, the, an, an empire unwilling to die. And, and it is precisely because this empire refuses to die that we, and, and, and keeps reforming itself to, uh, to live on, 
that we are witnessing all this turmoil or part of this turmoil in French speaking Africa today. Um, France denied independence to uh, full independence to uh, its um, African uh, uh, colonies 60 years ago. And that's why today uh, Africans uh, uh, take the, 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 the matters into their own hands. And, and by refusing to, to give up a full independence to Africa, France itself refused to decolonize itself. And I think that's, it, it is, it is, it's time now to, uh, to undertake this, pro this process and to, uh, and to succeed it at last. And what would that process look like? I think it, it, we, France has to, to, to give back the full sovereignty to the African people. That is, uh, pull out of the CF, CFA uh, monetary system to, to uh, uh, take back all its uh, military bases, to stop supporting uh, uh, autocrats. That's the first thing. Respect the full sovereignty of African people. It, it, it would be the first time since the, 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 the 19th century, and it's time to do it. And that was uh, Doma Del Tom, the co-author of the book, which translates to The Empire That Just Won't Die. Next up, next weekend in Niger, anti-France protesters are taking place uh, as relations continue to sour between the country's new military rulers and its traditional ally. Civil society groups called a three-day sit-in in Niamey starting this Friday to denounce the presence of French forces in Niger. A permanent sit-in has also been called. France has around 1,500 troops in the country to help combat a regional jihadist insurgency. The Nigerian junta has accused France of blatant interference after President Emmanuel Macron reiterated his support for President Mohamed Bazoum, who was ousted on the 26th of July. Next, at least 48 people have been killed in Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo after a crackdown on anti-UN protesters. A military document seen by the AFP news agency confirmed the death toll from Wednesday, Wednesday's demonstrations in Goma. It had initially been put at around 10. Some 75 people were also wounded as members of a religious sect called for the departure of some 10,000 UN peacekeepers who are monitoring fighting in eastern DRC. This report from our team in Goma. A family in mourning. Thirty-two-year-old Claude Amani was killed while taking part in a demonstration on Wednesday. A father of three, his death has left his family in a deep state of shock. Our son's body was riddled with bullets. It was the soldiers who killed him. He was lying in the morgue with other victims. We still need our son. He has a family. Internal army documents reveal that dozens were killed and at least 75 more were hurt when soldiers violently dispersed a crowd gathered to demand that United Nations peacekeepers leave the country. We are civilians. We have no weapons. We are angry to see the military shooting civilians instead of attacking the rebels. But publicly, officials put the death toll in the single digits and blamed the violence on protest organizers. Un groupe de bandes armés, drogués et manipulés. A group of armed bandits belonging to a religious sect, drugged and manipulated, deliberately sowed chaos in the town. The defense forces took every precaution. They were strictly professional as they put an end to the actions of these troublemakers. Many have become increasingly disillusioned with the MONUSCO mission as conflict between armed groups and the military continues in eastern DRC, despite the presence of over 10,000 UN troops. Next in South Africa, the death toll has risen to 76 after the devastating Johannesburg fire at an abandoned apartment block that housed dozens of homeless people and squatters. Search and rescue operations continue, with most bodies so badly burned they cannot be identified. Caroline Lamboli has this. Shock and devastation. More than 24 hours after the fact, 
families and friends of the victims sat outside this Johannesburg building on Friday, waiting for any news about their loved ones as search dogs comb the debris. Many people died, including my little brother. Some of us survived because we lived on the first floor and the fire didn't reach our apartment, but the one next door burned down. Also on Friday, members of the ruling ANC party and clergy came to offer their prayers. But they were met with scorn from some charity workers who'd come to offer help in the form of food and blankets. It's really tragic what's happened, as everybody knows, but to see the ANC and our government come out for their photo ops while people are starving, people are hungry, and they're here singing and, you know, posing for the media really, really is upsetting because they could do so much more. The tragedy has rekindled a debate on access to housing for all. Many of those living in the building were migrants. It was one of the city's so-called hijacked buildings, owned by the city and effectively abandoned by the authorities, and often inhabited by lower-income families. Not too far away, families trickled in at the local morgue. But for many of them, the agony is far from over. The authorities said Friday that only around a dozen bodies were immediately identifiable. Finally, voters in Ivory Coast head to the polls this Saturday for local elections. Some 30,000 candidates are standing in municipal elections and over 5,000 running for regional office. The polls will give parties an indication of their strengths and weaknesses ahead of presidential elections in two years' time. And that's it from Ion Africa for the moment. Stay with us here on France 24. In just a few moments, we'll bring you up to date with all the international headlines. Thanks very much for staying with us. Time now for Eye on Africa with me, Georgia Calvin-Smith. All the latest in politics, economics and the arts in Africa on France 24. Our journalists are in every region, every country, to report on the emergence of a continent of unparalleled riches. Bringing you Africa's stories on France 24. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Do so again. Take care. Liberté, égalité, actualité.